121%. That's how much NVIDIA stock has grown in the last five months, making it the second largest company in the world. But how did a niche California-based graphic card design firm go from being just a chip maker for video games to a $3 trillion behemoth that powers everything from Netflix to ChatGPT? Hi everyone, this is Business Boss, and today we'll discuss NVIDIA's rise and why it might soon become the biggest company in the world. The story begins in 1993 with the release of Jurassic Park. The movie became an instant blockbuster hit, grossing over $914 million worldwide and becoming the highest grossing film of all time until the release of Titanic in 1997. The biggest reason behind the movie's success would be its graphics. Many CGI-based films had been released before Jurassic Park, but none had mixed the computer-generated characters with live ones so seamlessly that the dinosaurs looked almost real. With the raging success of this movie, the demand for 3D graphics in the film production industry had skyrocketed, and the 1990s also saw the PC revolution take over America. While only 15% of Americans had a PC in 1990, that number grew to 35% by 1997. Computers became ubiquitous and fueled the rise of many tech giants that we know very well today, including Apple, Microsoft, and IBM. But while all this was happening, many companies also started to think about the future of computing. Back then, all the processing was done by the computer CPU, and large tech companies believed that the CPU would continue to do all of the work in the future. However, a Taiwanese-born American electrical engineer named Jensen Huang and his two colleagues Curtis Priam and Chris Malachowski believed that the future of computing would be graphics-based. They realized that while the CPU could run many applications on its own, it would require a GPU or graphics accelerator for rendering high-quality graphics. At the time, 3D video games and CGI-based movies were already starting to need this kind of powerful computing power. While working together to create more sophisticated graphics, these three people started a company called NVIDIA on April the 5th of 1993. The three founders had raised $40,000 from family and friends and started their company initially making video game computer graphics. Huang had wanted to design graphic cards that could be added with plug-and-play to a PC's motherboard and thus enhance both the CPU speed and the machine's graphics capability. In the early days, NVIDIA focused on one thing, chip design and they didn't have the money for manufacturing, so they designed the chips and outsourced the manufacturing to a Taiwanese company called TSMC, who has continued to manufacture all of NVIDIA's chips ever since. The founders' philosophy would be simple. They would create the core technology and outsource the manufacturing to a company that was good at it. This is why in 1999, when the dot-com bubble crashed, NVIDIA not only survived, but also released a revolutionary product that shook the gaming world, the NVIDIA GeForce 256. NVIDIA marketed the GeForce 256 as the world's first official GPU and the first programmable graphics card, which allowed its users to customize shading and lighting with their desired preference. Unlike older graphics cards, which relied on the CPU for complex 3D calculations, this graphics card had integrated transform and lighting hardware, which meant that the processing of 3D graphics was faster, cheaper, and much more efficient. In 2001, Microsoft launched its first Xbox, partnering with NVIDIA for its graphics cards, and this partnership would change NVIDIA's fate forever. Fast forward to 2006, and NVIDIA introduced the Compute Unified Device Architecture, or CUDA, a parallel computing platform and programming model that revolutionized GPU processing while significantly boosting performance for tasks like 3D graphics rendering and scientific calculations. So let's take a look at why CUDA was so revolutionary. Before CUDA, NVIDIA's GPUs performed serial computing processes, where tasks were processed one after another. But after CUDA, they had shifted to parallel computing, allowing multiple tasks to be processed simultaneously. For example, if a computer had to run four tasks, it could run them all in parallel, without having to wait for one or another to finish before starting the next. 
This significantly improved the performance of NVIDIA's graphics cards, and they could render 3D graphics, convert video file formats, and perform encryption, decryption, and compression processes. However, not everything that NVIDIA did was successful. In 2013, they had failed to enter the smartphone market with their Tegra 4i chips. Taking a step back, they had decided to stick to their tried and tested GPUs. By focusing on their strongest skill sets, the real growth would come after 2018, when NVIDIA released its first RTX series model, the RTX 2080. This was the world's first ray tracing technology graphics card. Prior to 2018, NVIDIA had produced the GTX series of graphics cards, which were mainly designed to improve PC gaming, which, if we look back, was how NVIDIA began in 1993. However, RTX graphics cards can do real-time ray tracing, simulating how light interacts with objects in order to produce more realistic shadows, reflections, and lighting effects. They also have enhanced AI capabilities, which help power the vastly improved performance of image quality and lighting in games. RTX cards also helped NVIDIA's chips enter a wide range of industry, including architecture, product design, complex large-scale model design, scientific visualization, energy exploration, and film and video production, where GTX cards do not perform well. But how did NVIDIA become the darling of the AI industry that it is today? Here's a fun fact. Just 22% of NVIDIA's revenue came from its main business last year, while 78% came from its data center segment. The data center segment provides AI-based data center platforms, high-performance computing, and accelerated computing for use in fields like self-driving vehicles, cryptocurrency mining, robotics, and other areas where high-performance computing is needed. This is the segment that's been built up on NVIDIA's massive investments in AI and high-performance hardware. And to understand how NVIDIA has dominated the segment so completely, we have to go back to 2006 when they first launched the CUDA technology and allowed their chips to perform parallel processing. Moving on to 2012, AlexNet, an accurate neural network, won an ImageNet large-scale image recognition challenge. Its backbone was based on CUDA technology. This event and others like it had made NVIDIA realize that parallel processing could become the backbone of deep learning, which would allow AI to learn tasks independently and without human intervention. Running the extremely compute-intensive AI processes and functions that power AI requires incredibly powerful processing hardware, and NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang realized that it could pioneer this technology before anyone else. This was such a revolutionary idea for its time that NVIDIA's VP, Brian Cantanzaro, mentioned how over the past decade he has often been questioned about why NVIDIA is so invested in AI. These investments in AI technology started to bear fruit in 2016 and 17 when cryptocurrency mining suddenly became a huge craze as Bitcoin surged from just $300 to nearly $20,000. The demand for GPUs would go through the roof, and NVIDIA, the maker of the most powerful GPUs on the planet, saw its profits soar from $614 million to $1,666,000,000. Apart from crypto mining, other major applications of this massive computing power, like DNA sequencing, have also begun to pop up in the last decade. DNA sequencing is an immensely time-intensive process that used to take weeks, but with NVIDIA's powerful GPUs, the time has been whittled down to days. In fact, an initiative led by the Stanford University School of Medicine identified genetic diseases in as little as five hours and two minutes using NVIDIA technology, which is now a world record. NVIDIA's powerful processing technology is also making small robots for Amazon warehouses using Tegra line chips, which are the same chips that had failed in 2013. NVIDIA's chips were also used in Tesla's Model 3 and Model 4, and although Tesla now makes its own chips, the important thing is that NVIDIA has the technology and can sell it to other self-driving car manufacturers. Moreover, AI chatbots have become a crucial factor in NVIDIA's latest success. The recent boom in AI chatbots, from ChatGPT to Google's Bard, Meta's Llama, and Anthropix Claude, have led to a huge increase in the sale of NVIDIA's A100 chips, which provide the massive amount of computing power that's needed to train them. 
For example, OpenAI's original ChatGPT model used 10,000 NVIDIA V100 Tensor Core GPUs, and the next generation of models will be powered by thousands of H100 Tensor Core GPUs. NVIDIA is the only company that can make these kind of chips, which is why their data center business is nearly two and a half times that of their nearest competitor, AMD. In March, NVIDIA launched another AI game changer, its Blackwell platform. The platform will help organizations build and run large real-time language models at 25 times less the cost and with less energy and consumption than its predecessor. In the latest quarterly investor call, CEO Jensen Huang predicted that the next industrial revolution is upon us and companies will now commoditize AI and new data center factories will emerge to produce this product using NVIDIA chips. If the dream does come true, NVIDIA could well and truly become the largest company in the world within the next few years. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and please like and subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a video like this one in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.